Hello. Um, today I thought I would um, experiment a little with Opal. Opal is this great library that lets you write Ruby code and transpiles it to um, JavaScript, which basically means we can now write Ruby in the front end. Uh, they also have a jQuery wrapper, which I'm mostly going to be making use of this um, because it has all that handy DOM uh, manipulation I'm, I'm used to. Um, dollar mark selector now becomes element uh, dot find uh, whatever uh, selector you choose. Uh, same as jQuery. Here we have a document dot ready block with an alert. Here we have some of my favorites, add class, remove class, and toggle class. I think I'm going to play with just those um, and do something real simple um, and just see if I can write some uh, some Ruby on the front end. I know there's a shortcut for this. That's the one. All right, Opal Experiments 101. So I'm going to need to link my CSS, and I'm going to use some CDNs here. So what we'll do here is we'll add an element we can play with. Um, we'll make a box, uh, and we'll say that it's got a class of red. Uh, it's going to say click me, and when you click it, we're going to make the color of the box change. So let's put in some CSS that will make that possible. And the important thing here is that we have two classes that we can toggle back and forth between. One is going to have the background color that's red, one is going to be blue, or actually let's call it teal. I like that. So we have those two classes. Um, we need a way to change between them. Let's start our web server up here. There's our box. You click it. Nothing happens because we haven't done anything yet. So. Let's go um, do some magic. Uh, now, I'm going to use some uh, uh, just inline scripting. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, it's just going to be faster. All right, so let's do our um, script tag here. Um, type uh, equals text slash JavaScript, no, uh, slash Ruby. Uh, bet you never thought you'd see that. OK. Let's um, start with something simple just to see if it's working. Uh, we'll put our document ready. So, actually, I probably don't need that because I'm using a script tag at the bottom of the, the HTML document. But what the heck, I've never done a document ready in um, Ruby before, so I'm going to keep it there for now. All right, let's just try an alert. So we'll try alert hello. And there is our alert. Awesome. Um, so let's try something a bit more complex. We'll define a variable here, a box. And we'll use a selector to select the box that we created earlier. And then we'll do a on click uh, function click is a symbol for some reason yes um, and we'll put a block here uh, in which we do something when we click on it so what do we want to do we want to toggle the class and yes that works awesome we're in business so let's get rid of that document ready I didn't really need that um, and so let's try something even more Ruby let's um Let's create a class for this, and this is kind of, um, this is going to be a bit contrived. Um, obviously we might not need a class for something this simple, but let's pretend for a second we could be doing something much more complex here. Use your imagination. So we'll say we have a class of shape and initialize a, a box attribute, which um, will be this <clears throat> HTML element on the page named box. Um, and let's try to define like a set of um, useful methods for some of the stuff we've been doing, like maybe in activate red to turn it red, and 
activate uh, teal to turn it teal. And um, uh, maybe we want to toggle between those two. And um, it might be good to know what state it's in. Right, so is it red or is it teal? You can just choose one of those. So we'll say, is it red? It's just going to return a true or false. And um, yeah, so where do we start with this? Um, I think is red should be pretty easy. There is a jQuery uh, function called has class, which returns a true or false if it has a certain class. Then here we will activate uh, red just by simply if uh, the teal class is there we'll go ahead and remove it and um, then we'll add the red class and we'll do the inverse for activate teal just swap those two around uh, and to toggle between them we can do a bit of conditional uh, kind of logic using that is red um, if it's red, we will activate the teal, and otherwise we will activate the red. So that gives us a good way to toggle between the two. Use your imagination and, and say that we're doing working on something much more complex that needs this kind of structure. Um, and we just want to organize our code, uh, and keep track of behaviors and states in, in a class. And so how do we use this class now? Let's um, go ahead and make a a new shape and use an instance variable here um, and we'll say that the box equals that um, well it's the only element we have in the HTML at the moment so it equals that one uh, and then we'll go ahead and put the on click for that box and we can use our toggle color here if we just want to simply do what we did before uh, that method that we defined up there and that's going to check if it's red and if it is oh i've got an error no method or undefined method for has class i know why that is actually because the um ruby version has a, a question mark there since it's returning true or false and now it should work yep and the jquery does not have a question mark in its syntax so that threw me off so just kind of going back um, to what I was talking about earlier, um, how using a different language um, might make you think differently about um, how you would approach a problem or how you would structure your code uh, in solving that problem. Uh, and maybe different languages would have you um, adhere to different philosophies or conventions or whatever the case. Um, it's interesting to me because one of the biggest complaints about JavaScript and jQuery um, without a framework like Ember or Angular or something is that people complain of having this unmaintainable mess of spaghetti code that really can't uh, easily be dealt with once it reaches a certain point of complexity. And I wondered if I was using Ruby. Um, and kind of adhering to uh, a lot of conventions that I have done for Ruby projects in the past. Um, you know, I wondered if, if it might solve some of those some those issues. Um, you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Certainly, I could see there could be some benefits to that. Like, um, you know, especially if I'm using Rails as like an API. Um, you know, then I could just you know make these kind of models and controllers on the front end and. You know, I could do controllers with the same kind of crud that I'm normally used to, only, you know, putting in uh, some AJAX uh, methods, or AJAX functions uh, into the front end uh, controllers to interact with my Rails API, etc. You know, it, it brings up some interesting possibilities for, you know, how I might structure uh, and create my own MVC uh, on the front end so it's something I might try uh, coming. now I didn't uh, properly um, go over uh, the basics of setting up uh, an opal uh, Ruby project on your local machine uh, there's actually a great tutorial um, I was looking at earlier on the site point for that 
you can go check that out. Um, it's got a suggested kind of uh, project structure. Um, I won't go over that because they've already got an awesome tutorial on it. And um, speaking of of kind of leveraging this to to build your own front end framework or MVC style uh, front end, I might mention somebody's already done that. Uh, the Vault framework. It's a really cool, new, and exciting um, framework that uses both Ruby on the back end and on the front end, all in one one simplified uh, app, and uh, they make use of Opal for that, um, and for, for some of that, for the front-end compilation to JavaScript, certainly. Uh, so you might uh, look into that uh, and give it a shot. Uh, anyways, uh, this has gone on longer than I anticipated. Thanks for staying with me, uh, if you've stayed this long. and. Uh, you know, I'd love to see or uh, hear about anybody else's experiments with Opal and, and um, what you're doing with this. Cool. Thanks.